Welcome back to All Your Tech 3D Printing. I'm Brian as always, and man, it's cool. I've almost got like a legitimate setup here now. I'm gonna have an overhead microphone like some kind of grown up adult and uh, a semi decent looking backdrop here. And finally, if you can't tell, we've uh, finally built a stand for Iron Man. So he's not just laying all over the desk like he was before. I've got this maker space that's sort of kind of dedicated for me and the kids to just tear things apart and have some fun. So we should see some really cool projects coming up. And I'm also excited to tell you about the first sponsor for the channel, but not quite today. It's coming soon. You're going to see a really cool build coming up and I can't wait to get that started. In the meantime, I've had a number of you ask about the hydroponic tower, specifically how to actually get it set up and give you kind of an update of where it's at and what's happened with it. I've had about two growing seasons out of this now, so let's show you the progress and what's happened. And to do that, I've got a second one here. And uh, this is what you can expect it to look like after a full growing season. We'll see if we can take this apart. Oh man, it's dropping a lot of stuff everywhere, but you know, that happens. All right. So why does it look like this? Well, <laughs> as you can imagine, 3D printed parts are quite porous. So no matter what you do, you're gonna have some leakage of the water going through the material. And in this case, the sediment that you see on the outside here is mostly from the fertilizer that you use. There's fertilizer that's kind of a reddish pinkish color when you put it in the water. And so over time, over the course of a growing season, that sort of builds up on the outside. Now, we've gotten tons of crops out of this thing. Tomatoes do absolutely incredibly. Uh, lettuce does well as long as the temperatures aren't too high. You wanna keep it below about 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, you get some sort of off-putting flavors out of the uh, lettuce that you're not gonna like so much. So I tend to like to grow lettuce indoors rather than outdoors. And that's what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get this actually set up to start growing indoors because my kids got some bunnies and I wanna give them some veggies so they can be nice, happy, healthy bunnies, like they should be. So this is what this thing looks like. And um, it's been a workhorse though. And I think, I think you could probably do one of two things. You could either coat this internally with a finish that would prevent it from leaking through so much. Although I, I don't know what that would do to the kind of usability for this with food. It's questionable to begin with how well you should use this with food, but you know, let's not get into that topic for now. I will say it's actually really easy to clean this up. You can see it sort of, it's already just kind of coming off if you rub it. And so what I like to do is either after growing season outdoors or indoors, either put this through a shower in the house if you can, or if you don't have access to that, maybe a power washer outside. It actually works really well. That's what I did for this one. And you can see that in comparison, this one looks like relatively clean and fresh and brand new. And so that's what I tend to like to do. You can tell it's been used. This one was used for the same amount of time. I, I tend to like to clean these up with a power washer. That works the best, but like I said, other options work just fine too. Once you've got it sort of cleaned up, you're kind of off to the races. You can really start to reassemble it and get it going again. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that these are two different colors. This one's green, this one's white. What I noticed is the, the white is actually harder to keep clean. And I also, I liked the green when I was growing vegetables and fruits and everything else because it sort of looks more plant-like. <laughs> I know that's kind of silly to say, but I think just sitting in the garden with the green tower uh, just looks a bit better sitting in your yard than this giant white thing that sticks out like a sore thumb. Now, some maintenance things. Besides cleaning this up, you are, if you, especially if you grow tomatoes, you're gonna have to, these are only gonna get one season, one growing. Um, sometimes you can reuse them. These are actually being reused because they had smaller vegetables like lettuce and uh, strawberries, that sort of thing in them. But if you've got tomatoes, their root system gets so massive that there's no way you're gonna be able to get the roots out without breaking this to pieces. So just know that ahead of time that you're probably gonna damage a few of these to the point where you're gonna have to reprint them and just throw them away, get you rid of them. It's not that big a deal. 
So, other than that, this thing is pretty well ready to go. So, we'll go ahead and Let's pull this guy over here. And I'm going to move this, uh, this green one out of the way a little bit. So we're going to focus on this white one. Now again, you know, like in my other videos we've seen, these are modular, so you can just sort of stack them as high as you want to. And in this case, we're going to probably take it down a little bit because I, I don't want to grow that much indoors this year. So the other thing I'm going to point out is a lot of you asked about um, running the pump 24-7. I don't do that, by the way. I, I think I might have in my first video just because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Uh, but I've got this guy. Uh, and if you can see this up close here a little bit. And what this does is this shuts off for about 20 minutes and then it runs for five minutes. And I've found that to be a decent amount of time. The reason I, I chose 20 off, five on is just by looking at the plants. You would notice if you kind of space it out a little more than that, especially on a hot summer day, the plants would start to droop. They didn't look so happy because the roots would start to get hot. And so that seems to be a, a good mixture of time on and time off. And uh, it seems to, you know, help the pump with its longevity a little bit. And you also get less evaporation from the water, which obviously you don't want to fill this up too often, but I did end up running drip irrigation over to the bucket. And so when my sprinklers come on to water all my other plants in my gardens, it would actually drip irrigate into the bucket directly. And that was enough to keep it full on a daily basis. I think there were one or two days that were north of 100 degrees Fahrenheit where I had to supplement with additional water. You could also go with a larger bucket. I, again, have a five gallon bucket in this thing. And so if you went with a larger bucket and you had a bigger water volume, it just kind of make your life a little bit easier, I think. So with that, we've got our pump. You can see it's still relatively clean, even though it's been in there for an entire two growing seasons now. And I do take the time in between growing seasons to clean the tubing. So what you're gonna wanna do is just disassemble everything, scrub your bucket out, and you should be doing that throughout the growing season anyway, two to three times minimum, because you don't want any algae or anything nasty growing in there. And also you can get a little sediment in there from the plant roots and all that fun stuff. So clean out your pump, clean out your bucket, and uh, clean some of the algae out of your tube. Other than that, and this lid has stood the test of time, it's probably got a little bit of rust on some of the bolts, but it's, it's holding its own. And the first thing we gotta do is uh, get some water into this sucker. So I'm gonna go fill this up real quick. So we got our bucket of water. We're gonna take that and put it into the container. And this thing's heavy. And a lot of you have asked about this pot because it looks sort of 3D printed and I wish I had a printer this big so I could 3D print something like this, but I don't. This is from CB2 and I really enjoy it. I'll try to drop a link down in the description if I can find one, but it's a really cool just planter that you can use for this. Now, we're gonna put the lid on top of the bucket inside here. Actually, no, we're not. So we've got to drop the pump in there. Get that guy connected. I'm gonna put this on the barb fitting so that it's connected securely onto the pump. Then we're going to drop this in. We're gonna run the cable through one of these side holes. And we're gonna run this right up the middle. Super easy. Now, you get to see me struggle bust with this a little bit. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it isn't. But you can see there's a hole right up the center. So that's where you gotta feed the tube. And it's easiest if you just sort of take the sections apart. You feed it through until you can connect the bottom piece There you go, locked in place. Second one. And finally, 
we have to connect this to the barb fitting on the bottom of this, which is a water spreader that spreads the water so it drips down nicely. You can see that here. We'll twist that guy on. We're pretty much set. Now, the last thing we need to do is plug this into the wall and plug the pump into this. And if all goes well, as you can hear, we got water running. And that is it, my friends. Hopefully the next time you see this, we'll be feeding some delicious lettuce and veggies to our rabbits that we've got downstairs. If all goes well, that'll be the case. And let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or anything else you'd like me to cover about the 3D printed hydroponic towers. Otherwise, hit that like and subscribe so YouTube knows to keep promoting this content. And we'll see you next time. Thank you all so much and happy 3D printing.